Did you watch the Tour de France femme of X Swift last summer? If so, you have Kate Verano to thank. Kate is the director of women's strategy at Zwift, the popular online cycling platform you're probably already using. She has done an amazing job, not only of elevating the company, but of elevating women's professional cycling as a whole. In this interview, we chat about parity in women's cycling, the barriers to getting more sponsorship for women, and how Zwift has acted as an entry point for getting women into the sport of cycling. Even if you're not into professional cycling or biking indoors, you'll love the female empowerment message in this interview. That's coming right up. Kate, thank you so much for being here today. We are going to talk all things Zwift and women's cycling, but before we dive into all of that, can you just go ahead and introduce yourself for women who are listening who don't know who you are? Sure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Kate Verano. I'm Director of Women's Strategy at Zwift. Okay. And what does that entail? Oof. What doesn't it entail? It's such a great time to be in women's sports right now. Um, so being director of women's strategy basically means that I am uh, advising, guiding, uh, directing a lot of our strategy around how we are resonating with women. Uh, how are our partnerships? How is our content reaching women in a way that makes them excited about the Zwift world. Okay. And I mean, if I guess if somebody has been living under a rock and doesn't even know what Zwift is, can you maybe tell us that? Oh, real sure quick? thing. <laughs> yes. So we kind of call ourselves the fitness company born from gaming. So Zwift is essentially we've built a virtual world through video game technology where cyclists and runners all around the world can train, ride, uh, race together in real time. So you really think about it, you're, you're indoor cycling or running in a video game. And uh, it's, it's really fantastical. It um, also can be really mimicking real world riding, but also can have dinosaurs and volcanoes. So it's a lot of fun. Um, we definitely wanted to reinvent indoor training so that you're not just staring at a wall or you're mindlessly kind of watching Netflix. Um, this is a way to really engage and be able to be social while you ride and train and compete uh, with riders and runners all around the world. I think one really interesting thing about Zwift too, is you mentioned that to make it more entertaining indoor training and that used to be like indoor training was just for cyclists. Most people didn't have a trainer, or, you know, any kind of setup indoors for training. And with Zwift, I feel like a lot of non-cyclists have gone into cycling and it's actually become this like entryway into the sport. Um, was that intentional or is that something that just kind of happened? No, but that is one of my favorite things that happened. Um, when I hear especially women that started by riding indoors on Zwift, maybe their partner introduced them to it. Maybe they were just looking for a, a good home workout over COVID but it gave them the, the confidence, the strength, the experience to go then outside and uh, you know try their first outside group ride or race or fondo or some other event. But I love hearing that because yeah, of course, originally it was sort of like, okay, a lot of people don't live in great places where they can ride outside year round. So we'll, we'll make a solution, we'll solve that problem by you know, creating this indoor virtual world. And the idea that this introduces people to the joy of cycling in all forms is very exciting to me. It is. Um, is there anything different from like a user perspective for women versus men? You know, uh, we definitely started to recognize that women were appreciating elements of our platform differently. They were behaving differently. They were motivated differently. They really loved the social side of Zwift, the social motivation, the ability to join a group workout and have some, you know, some encouragement while you're riding, um, to connect with other women cyclists. I mean, we all know anybody that's been riding outside for a long time knows that uh, we're in the minority outside. There is uh, still not as many uh, women cyclists as there are men cyclists. So when I first started riding 20 years ago, I was usually one of, one of the only women on the group ride. And so a lot of women don't have a great women's community that they can regularly ride and train with. And the idea that that's always available in Zwift has become a real, um, real motivator. Uh, we've also seen 
Um, women love the workouts in Swift. They they do a lot of workouts. They do prefer the efficient workouts, the like, you know, 40 to 45 minute mm -hmm. sessions. Um, I think, you know, women are great multitaskers. They, yeah. they, they lead busy lives with career and family, handling a lot of the, the household. Um, so they appreciate the ability, you know, to, to have their time and be able to get a, a good ride in within an hour. You know, you're on and off the bike and done, ready to move on to the next thing. That's how a lot of women I know work. <laughs> yes, myself included. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let's see, you are probably best known in the cycling world for the Tour de France Femmes. And for folks not watching on video right now, she's been wearing a Watch the Femmes hat. How did that all come about? Oh, man, I love this. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a dream job of mine to be able to promote the Tour de France Femme of Exwit. Uh, over COVID, um, over the pandemic, we hosted a virtual Tour de France on our platform with World Tour teams because the actual Tour de France was sort of on pause. And we do everything on Zwift, all competitions, complete parity. So equal men's and women's broadcast, prize purse, distances, 100% equal opportunity. So when we brought the virtual tour, a six stage exhibition race onto our platform that was gonna be broadcast, like literally broadcast on Eurosport worldwide, um, we did it with complete parity. We had women's and men's fields. Uh, all the women world tour riders were, were racing on Zwift. And the women's racing was incredibly exciting. Um, they really, they brought so much energy to it. They were really fun to watch. It was great racing, really aggressive tactics. And that kicked off a conversation with Zwift and the organizers of the Tour de France, ASO. How are we going to make a real women's Tour de France stage race happen? And that's when we signed on as a five-year title sponsor of the Tour de France Femme of X Zwift. There had been a women's La Course, which was a one-day uh, Tour de France stage for the women, but it was it was time to progress beyond that. But they needed the right partner to come on board and say, we're committed, we're investing, um, we're in it for the long haul, we believe in this, we'll help you make it happen. So um, it was really exciting to see what we could do with this virtual platform, make this real life opportunity happen. So in 2022, the, the first Tour de France Femme of X Zwift happened with all the best riders in the world racing. And it was a smashing success in terms of the visibility, in terms of the, uh, the fans along the side of the road, the audiences that tuned in millions and millions around the world completely blew away any expectation of, of how it would be, um, how it would be accepted and perceived and, you know, how much people would be excited about this. And um, it's now, it's really changed the game. Already we're hearing that uh, women's, the, women, the best riders in the world, their salaries are going way up. The visibility, more sponsors coming to the yeah. table, more people investing, more people tuning in, more people clamoring to watch because the racing is so good, the personalities are so good. Um, this is just, it's just great sport. And if you know, you're paying attention right now, there's a lot of great women's sport going on and this fits really well into that momentum. From a business standpoint, has it been like a successful investment? Is this something that we can use as an example for other businesses that yes, it makes sense to put money into women's cycling? I will stop anybody on the street and tell, talk to them about how how great of an investment right now women's sports are. And we're definitely seeing it with the Tour de France Femme of X Swift. The, the brand visibility, the brand affinity, um, the people uh, are seeing the Zwift brand across this and, and, and I'm seeing what we believe in. Like it, it's really connected to our values as a company and our mission to elevate and grow women's cycling. And that comes across because, you know, we got on, on board before we knew it was going to be a smashing success because we truly believe in it. And it's been wonderful. It's been so exciting to be a part of. Plus we get to have this really fun campaign because, you know, we're not just a sponsor that's trying to slap our name on something. We want to grow women's cycling. It's great for our business. Um, it's great for the world. It's great for the next generation of, yeah. of champions, you know, of little girls watching and knowing that, you know, they can grow up dreaming to race a Tour de France. Um, it's, it's really important. 
and uh, we're proud to get behind it. It's been wonderful for our business in terms of having more women around the world, men and women, quite honestly, because a lot of the fans are men, mm -hmm. um, more aware of Zwift as a brand and what we stand for. We've had a ton of fun with this campaign of my, my cap. Yeah. This Watch the Femme is our campaign around the tour. And that really just means support women cycling, tune in, like you don't want to miss it. It's so thrilling. It's so much fun. You got to get to know these riders. They're absolute superstars. And it feels it's it's a great moment to be in it because you're on the cusp of just greatness. Um, we're already seeing these, you know, these incredible performances that are, are making kind of superheroes out of these, these racers. And it, it, cycling needs that right yeah. now. Um, you know, the men's side of the sport is, of course, it's fabulous, but there needed to be some new energy, some new stories, some new characters. And yes. women's cycling has it all. What do you think are the next steps for women's professional cycling? Oh, definitely more development, um, a minimum salary for all UCI teams. That's coming, I believe, in 2025 or 2026. Um, that's going to be a big step, ensuring that all those women that are racing the Tour de France Femme of X-Swift are making real salaries. The World Tour teams have come a long way with salary minimums. Uh, there's a lot more sponsors coming on board. We're definitely seeing that this is the, uh, what is it, the tide that is rising and rising all, like, what is it, the uh, uh, rising, oh, the tide. rising tide. <laughs> yes. You're going to have to raise all ships. We're right? definitely yeah. seeing, yes, the rising yes. tide lifting all these ships. Yeah. And um, it's it's now time to make sure that, that women can truly do this professionally, that they don't have to be working a side job. They don't have to be living at their parents, um, that they can uh, be compensated for this kind of competition. So it's really coming along. We're also seeing more teams take on development squads, which is also a huge step in um, creating that bridge from amateur to pro. So uh, there's some great things happening there. We have our own program, Zwift Academy, which I'm sure you know about, which yep. is a global talent ID competition. And now the winner of that goes to Canyon SRAM Generation, which the Generation team is now sort of the feeder team to the pro team. It's a development team um, that has uh, seen some incredible talent emerge and feeding them right into the World Tour ranks in a way that's much more sustainable. It used to be such a massive jump to go from amateur to world tour. I mean, that's just too hard. And yeah. The competition has gotten too good. The depth of women's pro cycling is too good right now that we need these, these stepping stones. So that's what, that's what we're really seeing next. So I definitely encourage other brands, uh, local companies to get, to get involved um, because it's uh, the return is great. The visibility is great. And it's a lot of fun to get behind. For the average woman who's not a professional cyclist, why should it matter to us? What did, what kind of impact does that have on our lives if women are in professional cycling? I mean, we've got a connection to bikes going way back. It's like the first time we were allowed to wear pants, right? I mean, bikes are a tool of liberation. Um, I think that that there's so much joy that can be found on a bike. And if, you know, Happening, happening to see the Women's Tour de France or hear about a Women's Tour de France and just kind of knowing that that exists kind of gives us all uh, this idea that we can chase whatever mm -hmm. dreams we have on mm -hmm. a bike or elsewhere. It's just, it's a, it's another glass ceiling broken. Um, it's also, you know, it, it's also just normalizing that, you know, that pro sports is, is women and men. It's not just men and that uh, women deserve the visibility um, I think that we could all be inspired by what's happening at this level. And I also do think I really encourage, you know, women to get on bikes because it's a great lifelong sport. There's so many ways you can enjoy it. Uh, it's great, you know, great for your body, great for your mind. It's, it can be social. It can be, it can be really intense if you want it to be really intense, or it can just be, you know, a weekly coffee ride where you're meeting new people and getting out in the fresh air. Um, there's so many ways to enjoy a bike and it's something that you can do, you know, long-term, which a lot of sports, you know, the impact is, is a little too much for certain ages. Yeah. This is something that anybody can get into. I mean, there's a reason that there's a phrase, it's just like riding a bike, you know? So it's, it's something, it's a universal tool mm. that can serve so many purposes, you know, it can, it can really, you know, show you what your real strengths are, can unlock a lot of joy, new friendships, new experiences. Uh, I've been, riding bikes for about 20 years. I started in basketball 
and got on a bike because my knees were kind of messed up from basketball. And I've never looked back because the bike is just this gift that keeps on giving and I keep having more fun. I started out with racing, but now I just love, you know, long fun rides with friends. I love taco rides, donut rides, coffee rides, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I definitely, everywhere I go, I try to get on a bike because I think it's the best way to explore new places. Can you talk a little bit about your past as a professional cyclist? Sure. Yeah. So I got into racing. Um, I, like I said, I got into the bike. I, I started riding bikes just for fitness, um, but I was still such a competitive athlete. I still had the very competitive athlete mindset. And so I naturally, uh, somebody invited me to a bike race to watch and I watched it and I, you know, I saw this big pack of men go by. And then 10 minutes later, I saw a pack of women go by. I had no idea that women who raced bikes. Next thing you know, I am like, I want to do that. It looks so much fun. Um, I like the whole scene right away. I love the way it pushed my body in new ways. I, I don't think there's anything harder than a really hard bike race. Yeah. Um, and I just loved it. Uh, and I was like, I, I want to do this. I want to be a pro cyclist. And I got pretty good pretty fast. I had a great engine and I had the just the determination and, and my husband was supporting me in this in this endeavor. And I got to sort of, you know, pro level in the, the US, domestic pro. And there was still, you know, so little ways to make money. I mean, so little compensation. You basically got your equipment paid for, your travel paid for. Uh, you kept any winnings, you know, you split winnings with your team, but there wasn't like a real salary, you mm -hmm. know, there were so few salaried riders and this yeah. is like 15 years ago. So I had to get back to work because I was like in my er, like late twenties, early thirties. And I, I, that was just not sustainable. It wasn't a viable career choice. Yeah. So I continued to do it a little bit on the side, but there was a little part of me, my little part of my heart that was broken because I wanted to see how far I could go with it. So that's why this, what I'm doing now means so much more to yeah. me and why I speak so passionately about it, because the idea that we're creating opportunities for women to be able to chase their dreams all the way. I always say when I was in uh, college playing basketball, there was a women's WNBA. There was no end to my dreams for basketball. Yeah. I wasn't good enough to play in the WNBA, but if I was, you know, I, that was there. Yeah. And now to know that that little girls grow up thinking that the Tour de France is women and men uh, yeah. and that they can they can dream about lining up to the tour. They can dream about, you know, doing anything they want on a bike um, and that that women are making real salaries now. I mean, close to millions like this is we're getting there. It's yeah. extremely exciting. And just how quickly, it, you know, that tide is rising is what's so what's so interesting and so special right now. So um, we're just, you know, really excited to be a part of it. Um, and hopefully, like I said, inspiring women around the world to chase whatever their bike dreams are. Yeah. You actually got to go to the tour. What was the energy like there? What is that vibe? There is nothing like it. I've been to so many sporting events, but it is, it is so magical because you, you feel like we're changing the sport, you know, it's, it, it, like nothing will ever be the same again. There's families out there. There's little boys and little girls lining the course, um, the, the buses where the team buses are, it's mobbed with fans trying to catch a glimpse of Lada Capecchi or Demi Vollering or Cecily Uchub Ludwig. Um, the energy on the ground is, is sensational. And you really feel like this is, this is what sport is all about, the, that anticipation, that excitement uh, to be sort of, you know, in the realm of greatness, to just know that something awesome is going to happen today and to, you know, to actually be able to bring it to the world finally. I mean, mm. I, I, you know, you, it was, it's been so hard to watch women's racing. And now to have this is it's broadcast in 190 countries, you know, millions and millions of people tuning in yeah. around the world. I think half of French TVs were tuned in to the final stage of oh, wow. the race last year. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it was like well over 40%. And that's, and again, also in Belgium and, and uh, the Netherlands, as you can imagine. So it's thrilling. And yeah, um, yeah just, uh, I, I, it's unstoppable now too. Yeah. So there's this sense of this trajectory. It's, it, I, I like to say, it's a sort of like unlimited potential. 
And uh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Plus, like the athletes are such great ambassadors for the sport. Uh, really great personalities, great stories, mm -hmm. fierce, feisty, fun. Um, you, you got a little of everything and you need that, you know, you need the, the heroes, the villains, uh, you know, the teen dramas. Uh, it's, it's really great. It's got yeah. a little bit of everything. I love that. I think that having this role of director of women's strategy is so unique. Like a lot of companies don't have any such role. I think that if Red Bull had a director of women's strategy, they probably would have female writers at the rampage, right? Like yeah. what um, what is different about Zwift that they had a culture where this became a thing and how can yeah. more companies be doing something similar? Yeah, so this comes from uh, the core of who we are as a company. We're a bit disruptive. We, we set out to do something differently. And we started out with the Zwift Academy program. We said, we're going to host a, a competition to win a pro contract in a virtual video game. And that changed the game. Yeah. And we did that actually that first year was just with a women's team. We now do that program with both a women's and a men's team. But we, we have this virtual world. We can literally do whatever we want. We can play by our own rules. And so we get to set those rules. Yeah. And we found early on, we had a responsibility, you know, an obligation to really, to, to start with parity. There's no reason not to. Um, literally, we have a virtual world. We can, we can kind of create the world of cycling that we want to be a part of. Cycling has struggled with, with recognizing women, designing for women, investing in women, committing to women, televising women, broadcasting women. Um, it, it was time for a change. And we started out with just on our own platform, but then we recognized an opportunity to bring that outside. And so like, why not keep going? And the feedback has been so good to see it really making an impact on the future of the sport. It, it means so much. So we're, so we're not stopping now. And the director of women's strategy role came out of the recognition that there was different needs on the women's side of the sport. There's different behaviors. There's different things that needed to change. There needed to be a, a specific approach. You know, somebody really looking at this and saying, where are the gaps? Where are the challenges? Where are the obstacles? Where are the opportunities? And I'm so proud of Zwift as a company. I mean, it wouldn't be without, honestly, a lot of male leadership. That, that was 100% behind this, wonderful allies, wonderful advocates, um, believing in it, and then, and then giving me, you know, putting their confidence in me to help drive it and to help deliver that message. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really like, it, it is truly a dream job. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the biggest barriers to more companies doing something similar or for more sponsorship coming into women's cycling? Yeah, I think there's, huh, let's see, um, what are the biggest barriers? I think it's kind of recognizing where the opportunities are, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you do have to take a little bit of risk. You don't, you're not going to 100% know um, what the return on that investment is going to be. So you have to really believe in it. You have to have a good strategy behind how you're going to activate any investments or how if you're designing specifically for women, um, how you're going about that whole process to ensure that it's a really well-informed process that is, is truly creating something that's going to resonate with women. Uh, there's different obstacles and barriers for women in the sport, and it's kind of identifying them. It's going right to the source, understanding um, what's holding women back, you know, where are uh, where where are the ways that they aren't able to, or they they don't feel invited, or the sport doesn't feel accessible? Mm -hmm. There's tons of opportunity. We saw it over the pandemic. More women than men got on bikes over the pandemic. So there's like you know if you're paying attention right now, and then you also know a little bit about marketing and how much of you know the how much women control the the spend in a household and, yeah. and influence financial decisions. It's like somewhere between like 75 and 80% of all financial decisions. So like, it's important to appeal to women. It really is. And you have to do the work to get there. Um, I know, I, you know, I struggle at times to get the, the resources and the support to really delve further and further in to really understand and get the best research and to get the, the best feedback to ensure that we're, you know, moving forward confidently with something that we really know is going to is going to um, connect with women. 
So it, it really, it is the work needed. It is um, having women in leadership at companies mm -hmm. is a big yeah. part of it as well. And that is a big barrier in the cycling industry that we're seeing start to change. I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of a program um, by Shift Media called Uplift. And that's mm -hmm. a women's mentorship program where a whole bunch of us women that are have worked their, their way up, you know, somewhere, some way up in in the industry yeah. to now um, help uplift other women in the industry by offering mentorship and support and guidance um, to really help pave a path for women in the industry. Because I'm telling you, it, you know, it was not a easy road. It was yeah. a windy, switchbacky, obstacle-laden, gravelly, cobbly road to get to where I'm at. And I, I'm so grateful to be here. And it wouldn't be wouldn't be without the support of a ton of men and a ton of women. But it's uh, it needs to be a little easier than that, quite honestly. Yeah. And it needs to recognize the perspective of women um, in strategic roles um, needs to be um, appreciated and valued. Uh, we all know if you look at any research, um, it says that, you know, companies with women at the C level and on their board uh, do better, you know, so, right. so just, you know, just follow the research. Who are some of the women within the bike industry that have like inspired you or acted as a role model? Oh, there's so many. Um, you know, there's just a great energy amongst us women in the industry. Um, I've always loved like early on Kate Pallison over at SRAM mm. was, was such a, such a beacon in, in just doing things differently and exciting. Alison Tetrick, just as a leader in the sort of privateer space and a real outspoken voice, um, Cassandra Spring over at Live is a great friend and an advisor and um, just brings a wonderful energy to the score. I love Orla from GCN. I think, you know, just watching what she does um, and how she defies all stereotypes and is uh, brazen and, and wonderful in her coverage and true to herself. Um, Aisha McGowan is somebody I work mm -hmm. with regularly and paving a path, like blazing a path for BIPOC women, um, you know, in racing and in, in riding. There's so many women that I'm constantly inspired by. So it's a, it's a good thing in the industry. Um, I'm seeing so much more of it than I did, you know, 10, 12 years ago in the industry. So, and the fact that we're recognizing that and, and saying, okay, now what can we do to, you know, make it double the women in five years? <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned a couple of times the pandemic and we all know there was like this huge cycling boom during the pandemic and a lot of companies are now seeing like a post pandemic slump. Has that been an issue for Zwift? No, actually it hasn't. Um, of course, like the, um, absurd growth we had during the pandemic slowed to a softer growth, which yeah. is great. Like that's much more manageable yeah. and probably, you know, the, the ship needs to right itself. Um, it's been uh, really great to see that, that uh, over the pandemic, a lot of people recognize the value of riding indoors, uh, the efficiency of riding indoors that, that uh, when you're, when you have a busy work week or you don't have time to get outside that you can still get a, a solid workout in, in, in less than an hour indoors. So it sort of became part of their, their weekly schedule. So um, also just, you know, the, the brand awareness that we've uh, had over the pandemic and through the Tour de France Femme of X Zwift and other initiatives like Zwift Academy and our UCI Esports World Championship. Uh, a lot of the things have gotten us front and center out there and um, really allowed people to kind of recognize the value of, of Zwifting, you know, and that it can work really well as a supplement to your outdoor riding. Yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping that growth continues, especially in the women's market. But I, I think that will be the case. It's great to see more trainers be, you know, a, a price at accessible prices. Yeah. Yep. So more people able to get in the game because, you know, there is that upfront investment to ride indoors. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been good. What trainer do you use? I actually, I've got a wild kicker bike back there, which I, ah, I see it. Okay. Love. Um, I'm a big Wahoo fan. I also, I've, I've ridden the Zwift hub. I love the Zwift hub as well, but, um, yeah, I've been, you know, on Wahoo for pretty much since the beginning and I really love their products. That bike is quiet. I was watching yeah. a basketball game with my my brother-in-law and brother and, uh, and and husband yesterday while Zwifting and they didn't even mind. So. Yeah. 
It's way different from the olden days. <laughs> yeah, totally. It was very loud, right? Um, I have three final questions for you, but first, right. where can people come connect with you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram at my full name, Kate Verano, V-E-R-O-N-N-E-A-U. Um, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn as well. And uh, you can find me in the Zwift Women's Training Club on Zwift. Ah, very good. <laughs> Okay, three final questions. The first one is what bike or bikes do you ride? Oh, that's a great question. So I've got a Canyon Ultimate that is painted uh, pink and purple leopard print. I've got a Parley that looks like a giraffe. <laughs> I've got a Cervelo uh, R3 that looks, uh, that's got a um, flying squirrel paint job. And I have a beautiful Santa Cruz Stigmata for the gravel. Mm. And then I also have an 80s Pinarello um, that was, uh, that's my city bike. <laughs> that was somebody built up for La Roica. And I, I got that one to, to cruise around town, very um, breaking away style. Yeah, so I, I love my bike collection. I'm spoiled rotten because my husband, MPH Paint, is a painter. Oh, and so he has a lot of fun decking my bikes out. Uh, really, really fun paint jobs. Oh, so, that's pretty lucky. Yeah, it kind of yeah. goes with my personality too. I, I'm six foot tall. I wear bright clothes and big earrings and ride loud, loud bikes. <laughs> Next question is, where is your favorite place you've ever ridden your bike? Oh, that's such a good question. I'm going to have to say the Algarve in Portugal. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, I got to ride uh, for 10 days uh, the dirt roads of uh, southern Portugal, and it was magical and quiet and serene and just fantastic. I really enjoyed it. People were lovely. The food was incredible. The vistas were spectacular. Tiny little villages and epic sea views, and it was a, like trip of a lifetime. But this year, I'm actually going to go on a mountain bike safari in South Africa. Oh, cool. As part of a, a conservation effort. And I'm really excited about seeing giraffes in real life. Yeah. <laughs> so, so check in with me uh, next year. <laughs> but it is my favorite thing in the world to do is, mm -hmm. is ride my bike in new places. Final question is what is your favorite thing about riding your bike? And maybe it's going new places, but... <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's the newness. It's new friends. It's new experiences, new places, new adventures, new challenges. I, it never stops. And if you look for it, the bike has so much for you. And you just have to, you know, you have to really keep your mind open and, and try out new things all the time. And, and for somebody like me that really does um, I'm a bit impulsive and I, I love, I, I can't do like an out and back route. I need to do like a loop. I need, and I need to do constant new loops. And for somebody that needs a lot of stimulation like that, who really is, is adventurous and, and really wants to see as much as possible and experience as much as possible, the bike has got it all. So I, I love that. <laughs> 